Okay. My name is Susan Shrum and I'm the Hospice Ancillary Services Supervisor. Today we are doing Helping New Clients Adjust. Just remember when we're going through this, not to mention, if you're going to say anything, not to mention any patient names so that we don't have to record Okay. Okay. We're going to start on page two. How will you know if your client is adjusting? Signs of adjustment problems. Um, under that, it's going to be mood, depressed, withdrawn, and angry, and um, long-lasting or severe sadness, or feelings of hopelessness. Um, signs of a healthy adjustment um, would be mood is appropriate for the circumstance, looks on the bright side of most situations, and is able to joke and stay positive. Um, signs of adjustment problems for behavior are ignores or rejects rules or routines, and um, regressive behaviors acts helpless, demands special attention. And then signs of a healthy adjustment under behavior is recognizes and responds appropriately to rules and routines, makes an effort to participate in meals and activities. Um, we're going to go back to the first page, page one, and let me just read a little bit about um, a life of treasures and memories. Lily lived a romantic and exciting life as a professional ballet dancer. She um, toured the country as a young woman, dancing with passion and grace. She met her husband after a show one evening. He was handsome and smart. She just described it as love at first sight. They got married and started a family right away. Lily gave birth to two girls, and the new family spent years traveling all over, collecting treasures and memories from each adventure. Lily showed her children all the famous theaters that, where she danced. Her oldest daughter followed in her footsteps and became a ballet dancer. Sadly, over the past year, Lily has lost her husband of 54 years of marriage. He was her best friend. While she was grieving, Lily found out she had breast cancer and started chemo and radiation. The treatments were rough and she was having trouble managing alone. She became more and more forgetful and confused. One night, as she tried to make her way to the bathroom in the, in the dark, she fell and broke her hip. Her daughters came to her next day to talk about uh, assisted living. Within a month, Lily's house was sold to make money to pay for long-term care. Most of Lily's treasured possessions from her travels were dispersed among the family. They rest, the rest were either put into storage or sold. They then came moving day. Lily was tearful and helpless. Her daughters felt awful and full of guilt. For the first two weeks, Lily spoke to no one. She never left her room. She refused calls from her children, she, and she refused to participate in her own care. Lily was having trouble adjusting to the reality of her new situation. That's sad, huh? All right, so we're going to go to page four. And adjusting to the environment, leaving your home to make, um, leaving your home and making major life changes can be frightening and confusing for older adults. Your goal is to make them feel at home as possible in this new environment. Help new clients feel at home. Prepare the room in advance. A lot of this is um, for nursing home patients, but some of it can apply to your patient. Also, um, we see patients in nursing homes. It also helps you to get, um, to kind of think how they are, what they're going through. So as you go in there and you start moving their things around to get them ready for a bath and going through their stuff, just you'll, you'll understand what they're going through and all the losses that they may have had. So I, this may not um, apply to everything we're doing, but it really helps you to put yourself in their place. Okay. So, preparing the room in advance. Preparing in advance lets the client know you're ready to, and waiting for her arrival. Tidy up the room, make the bed, um, 
and then it says bring an admission kit, but we don't have those. Inform the roommate if there's a roommate, let him or her know in advance that there will be a new resident. Um, spring in this news on a roommate. In the presence of a new client can make everything feel awkward. Orient the client to the room. Upon arrival, help the client get comfortable by orienting him or her to the room, apartment, or suite. Help the client locate important places in the bathroom and the closet. Adjust the shades, lighting, thermostat if needed, and make the room feel comfortable to the client. Ask about preferences and uh, make adjustments as needed. When the time is right, introduce the roommate if there's one, um, and then try to have something pleasant prepared to say about each person to help them get to know each other. For example, this is Rose, and she can tell you about the food and coat drive that we do for local families during the holidays. <clears throat> Un help unpack and arrange personal belongings. Be sure to say out loud where you are putting things and to make sure that the client hears you. For example, I'm hanging your robe on the back door, ba on the bathroom door. Will that be okay for you? You're letting the patient be part of the decision making. Place frequently used personal items like glasses, magazines, and journals in or on the nightstand. Show the new client how to operate the call system. Um, and then show the new client how to operate a television and um, telephone. On page five, we're gonna read the thing about it. The freedom to be mad. You have your health and your freedom, so you have options when it comes to dealing with feelings like anger, sadness, or stress. You can talk to a friend, go for a walk, give, uh, go for a bike, or sorry, a drive, or take a bubble bath. What options do your clients have? Most of them feel some degree of anger, sadness, or stress during the adjustment period. How they deal with these feelings is the key to a smooth transition. Before a client gets to the point of throwing things, complaining, or refusing to cooperate, ask the client or the family uh, what will help. Find out what the client likes to do to relax. Maybe he likes to listen to music or go outside for some fresh air. Maybe she likes to clean when she's angry, Give her a towel and let her dust the knickknacks, or if she feels able, give her a broom and let her sweep. All right, makes them feel like they're doing something. When I was um, working in Alzheimer's unit as a CNA, I would go and get socks from the laundry and let the Alzheimer's ladies play with the socks and they would match them and they felt like they were doing something, it was keeping their hands busy. So. Kind of thinking outside the box is nice. Page six, adjusting to fall risk factors. Research shows that falls and fear of falling are much more common in new long-term care residents than others who have been in the facility for a while. Help new clients adjust to fall risk factors. Talk to your client about their risk for falls. Clients who are not confused or disoriented can and should be trusted to work with the healthcare team to make themselves safe. Explain the facility's fall precaution, fall prevention policy. If your workplace um, has a policy like call don't fall in place, be sure that your client and their family members understand the policy and know why it is so important. Make sure new clients are familiar with the environment, including the location of the bathroom, light switches, and call bell. And when you guys are seeing clients here in a facility, you're putting the call light if they're bed bound near them. Even if they're not able to push the button, you still have it there. Good. Um, no locks, please. As a precaution, ask clients to always leave the bathroom door unlocked. If a fall occurs while they are inside a locked room, give them assistance Giving them assistance would be tough. Use assistive devices as ordered. Some clients feel that using a cane, walker, or wheelchair is a sign of age or weakness. If your client is not using their equipment as ordered, report your observations to your supervisor. In this case, you would report it to the facility um, charge nurse or uh, director of nursing. 
Confused, non-compliant, or combative clients um, may need to be coaxed into following the rules that keep them safe. For example, you may need to sit down with the client that, and family members and convince the client to agree to call for help as needed, or you may um, have them sign a contract. The contract may simply be a piece of paper that says, I will call for help before getting up to walk. <laughs> then have the client sign it and tape it up where it's easy for them to see. Encourage new clients to stay as active as possible and to get some kind of a daily exercise. If your client is being treated by a physician, physical therapist, ask the therapist what you can do to help your client stay active. Encourage daily stretching exercises. Flexibility becomes limited with age, bending to pick up things or reaching for a phone can be tough. Daily stretching helps keep the muscles flexible and strong. Next page, making emotional adjustments. By the time the new client becomes a resident in a long-term care facility, he or she has likely suffered many emotional losses. For example, your client may have lost a spouse or close friend, received a diagnosis of a chronic illness, lost driving privileges, or lost that familiar surrounding of home, all these losses can make an adjustment difficult. Help new clients adjust to emotional losses. The loss of independence. To stay safe, many people um, who need daily help must become residents at nursing facilities. Losing their home means losing their independence and sense of control. People will feel as if they have no control over their lives may lose self-esteem. They may also become depressed, uninterested, and doing anything for themselves. Allow your elderly clients to make um, as many of their own decisions as possible. This allows them to feel in control and may keep them from becoming more and more dependent on you. Help our clients focus on things they are still able to do rather than dwelling on the things they can't do anymore. And we're going to go over to loss of purpose on the right hand side. Many people take pleasures in being productive. If they lose the ability to be productive, they may feel worthless. They may start to think, I am no good to anybody. I'm just thinking, taking up space. The goal for many, most seniors is to fill their time in a rewarding way rather than to have each day drag oh, excuse me, on with no purpose. So help your clients to find a variety of interesting and fun ways to pass their time. Help your clients feel uh, valuable, recognizing the knowledge and wisdom they have gained through the years. For example, ask if their opinion on a current event or an issue such as how to invest money or discipline a child. Just make sure you stay away from politics. Okay. Um, let's go to page eight. And we're going to go down to help clients adjust to the new social, social situation. It's going to be on the left-hand side, second paragraph. If your new client resists socializing with others but seems capable of it, make an effort to understand why. He may be angry, shy, or even depressed. If a client seems depressed or withdrawn, report your observations to the nurse. Depression is common in this age group, and, but it is treatable. Ask members of a church group and other volunteer organization that, um, organization that to make a visit to your clients, especially those who are rarely visited by family members. If family members, especially children, come to visit, encourage them to play a game with your client. Volunteering can give your client a sense of purpose and the satisfaction of helping others in need. There are plenty of opportunities available like package care, um, packing care packages for troops overseas, organizing a coat drive for school kids, or making blankets for sick children. Um, and then there's a website that you can look for volunteer opportunities. On page nine, <clears throat> Patients' Bill of Rights. It's common for people to feel powerless um, when they are forced 
to move um, into long-term care. That's why it's important for your new clients to learn about their rights. All clients have rights to high quality care, a clean and safe environment, be involved in their own care, protection of privacy, professional discharge planning services, and help with bill and insurance claim. Help new clients understand their rights. Residents of nursing homes and assisted living facilities have rights to um, have family members visit anytime, 24 hours a day. Don't let them tell you different. <clears throat> Reuse, uh, refuse to see a particular visitor, manage to spend their own money or decide who will manage it for them, bring in personal belongings, wear their own clothes, participate in activities of their choice, visit with their spouse in private, send and receive personal mail, and move freely about the facility without restraints as long as they aren't a danger to themselves or others. More ways you can maintain your client's right are never threaten your client to get them to cooperate, never force your client, sorry, never force care on a client, even if you know it's for the best, and never apply restraints without a doctor's order. And when we go in, we need to make sure that if the facility has an order. Also, bed alarms, those kinds of things. If you remove it, make sure you replace it um, when you leave that way. We're making sure the patient stays safe. All right, so let's get to these questions, guys. All right, number one, your new client is not adjusting well if he, A, makes jokes or laughs a lot, B, acts helpless and demands a special attention. C, gets sad for short periods but recovers quickly. Or D, spends all his free time meeting new people and making friends. B, B. B is correct. Um, this is for regression and a sign that the client is not adjusting in a healthy way. Your goal is to encourage the client to participate as much as possible in his or her own care to improve confidence and self-esteem. Number two, your main goal in helping a new client adjust should be to help them A, feel at home, B, forget the past, C, express their anger, D, learn their rights. A, A correct. Leaving home and making major life changes can be frightening and confusing for older adults. Your goal is to make them feel at home as possible in this new environment. Number three, a good way to help a client who feels he has no purpose in life is to A, suggest he watch more television, B, ask for his opinion on current events, C, remind him that God has a plan for everyone, or D, suggest he move in with his daughter and grandchildren. B. B, B is correct. Ask for his opinions on current events. Watching more television isolates the client and can lead to depression, suggesting God has a plan may not be very comforting to someone in their late in life, that is late in life. It may be hard to find comfort in a God that wants that waits so long to reveal his plan. Moving in with the family members may not be an option and this is not for you to decide. Number four, a client who resists socializing with others may be A, depressed, B, shy, C, angry, D, all of the above. D, D. D, you're right. Making an effort to understand why your client is resisting socializing, he may be angry, shy, or even depressed. Number five, true or false, when unpacking a new client's belongings, you should put things where you want them if, it's, if it was your room. False. False. When unpacking a new client's belongings, you should ask the client where he or she wants to put the, the items. Number six, <clears throat> true or false, feeling angry is normal during the adjustment period. True. 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 Um, how the person deals with the anger is key to a successful transition. Um, number seven, true or false, new clients have a higher risk for false during the adjustment period. True. true. Research shows that clients have a higher risk for false 
and more fear of falling during an adjustment period. You gotta think, they don't know where the bathroom is, they don't know where the lights are, they don't know where the furniture is, those kinds of things. Plus, they may wake up confused because all of a sudden they're in a new place. Um, number eight, true or false. Most people are willing to give up control over their own lives as they age. False. False. Most people are not willing to give up control even when they age. Number nine, true or false, all clients have the rights to be involved in their own care. True. 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 All clients have the right to be involved in their own care. This is one of the rights protected by the patient's bill of rights. Number 10, true or false, <clears throat> you should avoid involving the family if a client is having trouble adjusting. False. False. <coughs> false. You should attempt to involve the family if a client is having a problem adjusting. The family may have some insight or suggestion that can make the adjustment period easier on the client. So let's go through one more time and I'll read every, all the answers up to make sure we have them all right. Number one is B, two is A, three is B, four is D, five is false, six is true, seven is true, eight is false, nine is true, ten is false. Make sure you sign it, date it, write your name on it, and fill out the back. Are there any questions?